Hello everyone, Amateur Meteorologist. First weather here, it is November 8th, 2020, and this is going to be a very quick video, just an update on Tropical Storm Ida. Uh, you can see right here, it's a naked circulation uh, just south of Florida, so that indicates just how weak this system is. Uh, it does have sustained winds of 65 miles per hour, but I do think that's greatly uh, uh, overstated as the, uh, so the, the wind measurements are really much higher up in the atmosphere, so I think at the ground level, uh, these winds really must not really be too strong, and I think that the, the area of highest winds must really be just in this small region right in the northern quadrant of the storm, uh, while the rest of the threat for the, uh, from the storm is just primarily rain. But you can see it is spinning up quite nicely. F compared to yesterday, there is a very little convection. Uh, last night, you had pink and whites coming up on the radar, indicating some very cold cloud tops uh, this evening uh, and tonight. You can see it's definitely uh, toned down just a bit with most of the convection on the northwestern quadrant of the storm, indicating a very asymmet asymmetrical system, which further points to a weakening or, uh, or at least a system that is not really showing any signs of strengthening anytime soon. Going to the uh, 10 p.m. advisory, advisory number 35, it's moving northwest at 14 miles per hour. So you can see this is where the circulation is right here, just to the south of Florida, a very large tropical storm wind field extent. Uh, of course, of course, the, the strongest winds are not really going to be uh, that far out, but you are going to have barely uh, tropical storm force winds extending quite far out. That typically does happen in weaker systems. And you can see that it, it's expected to really just sort of meander and drift this to the southwest, barely skirting Florida. Uh, it looks like the heavier rain totals that were feared in southern Florida are going to be a little bit to the south as it's, as it's uh, sort of gone in a more southerly track. But you can see right here around this time, 7 p.m. Tuesday, it's going to make a, a sudden shift to the north and east. And then by 7 p.m. on Thursday, be approaching uh, the Florida Peninsula again to make a landfall sometime around uh, early Friday morning. And that's how it looks right now. However, I need to caution that this system is very slow moving. It's going to be drifting a lot, so it's predicting its track is going to be very difficult. Uh, but all that Floridians need, uh, Floridians need to know is that uh, you're going to have one pass tonight, and then it's going to sort of drift and then potentially come back uh, on Thursday or Friday uh, as a tropical storm. But it is ex actually expected to re-intensify into a hurricane uh, once it's over these open waters with relatively low wind shear. Um, and uh, marginally uh, seasonable and favorable water uh, temperatures. So now switching gears to the ensemble model forecast, you can see that almost all of them do have it uh, going southwest and then making that sudden abrupt turn right around here, around 24 degrees north uh, latitude, and then make a steady uh, progressively northeast track, making landfall somewhere right around here uh, in Florida, central Florida, um, you do have a few errant members taking this uh, to the west. I don't think that's going to happen, but it does reflect on the uncertainty with where exactly the system will go. Because yes, yesterday the model tracks were taking this uh, essentially all the way out here. Now they're down here. So that's going to be the nature with the system because there are really no uh, major steering currents that are guiding the system. And finally, looking at the uh, intensity graphics, you can see that it's supposed to maintain at least a strong tropical storm strength uh, for the next 84 to 96 hours. So that takes you to about Wednesday and Thursday. There are a few models that do take it to Cat 1 strength, and that is in indicated in some of the operational models. That is certainly a possibility, especially once it goes and uh, around that time that it makes that northeasterly turn. But I think once it uh, is close to uh, making landfall again for a second time, it will be around tropical storm strength. Now, finally, this is the NAM model. Just to give you guys an idea, it's not, it's not a hurricane model by any means, but I just want to, want to give, you an, you, you give you guys an idea about what's causing the system to not really go anywhere. And you can immediately notice this big area of high pressure just sitting over uh, the, uh, the Mid-Atlantic. And what's that? the, uh, the uh, outcome of that is you have very strong uh, winds basically going like this from that high pressure system, forcing the system to drift east but with that ridge right here, it really has nowhere to go. And you have the westerlies coming in from here, and it, it sort of collides, and you just have the system stuck in this region right here. And that is what the, the NAM model actually does show. And this is uh, onesie Monday, so basically right now, and then Monday uh, afternoon, still a big ridge in place, system drifting to the southwest. 
and then that it just stays there where it could intensify briefly. And then finally, on around Wednesday, Thursday, it, makes, it starts to make that turn to the northeast. And you can see this model is very delayed. It doesn't really make, have it making that turn. But I think when that uh, this cold front right here comes through, it, that will give it enough of an oomph and a kick to really push it back into Florida and uh, make it get out of here. Uh, so this is going to be a very slow moving system. The main threat really is just going to be rain. I think southern Florida could see anywhere from three to five inches tonight into tomorrow. Uh, with not really any major wind threat, uh, just a few gusty winds up to 50, 60 miles per hour at most. Uh, so that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, uh, and uh, I'll see you next time.